Hey yo, what's up guys, John Boogle here, and we're finally here for the Kappa Guide, and of course, let's get right into it. This is the lineup here, the first lineup we're going to go through in this video. There's going to be two different strategies in this video, kind of similar, but they do require different center point units. Both strategies will be built around the research up combo, so make sure you do have that. Very, very crucial combo for this stage, especially with stacking up those cameras and stacking up that DPS, because DPS is very important in this stage. Another important thing is, of course, Manic Eraser, only in the beginning, and you'll see why later. And the GOAT, Cameraman, of course. Cameraman, you want to get him at level 40 minimum. If you're at this point in the game and you haven't boosted your cameraman, I mean, mine is pretty low level for the point we're at. So do beef up your cameraman, it makes this a lot easier. And another thing you don't have to really worry about boosting is Seafarer because Seafarer does have survival lethal strike so you don't need to boost him to survive a hit. But you can boost him to survive a hit if you want to get him to level like 47. I mean, I don't recommend boosting Seafarer. I mean, if you want that extra DPS, sure. Now, Pizza, you want to get him to at least level 35 to survive a hit. So make sure you have him above level 35 and you're set. And that is our main source of damage right there. Camera being the number one priority for damage, that is why you want to boost camera. Then we have Seafarer for the crowd control against the alien kangaroos, aka scissoroos. Then of course we have Pizza for the survivability and DPS as well. Now that is the first half of the lineup. Let's talk about the second half and the very crucial half, the crowd control aspect. Of course, Macho Crystal. This is very crucial for this strategy right here. Now don't stress if you don't have Macho Crystal because in the second half of this video we're gonna go over the strategy with True Form Vendor aka Taurus Cat. But this first one, Macho Crystal is crucial and another crucial unit we have in the first lineup here is of course Sniper the Deadeye. A very very OP unit to bring in this stage. And the reason I say OP is because right next to him we have one of the best cats in the game, of course, Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk paired with Sniper the Deadeye makes it very possible to just lock crowd control Kappa very easily. Now, the thing with Cyberpunk is you don't have to get a high level or anything. The main reason we're bringing him is the crowd control, but extra DPS is nice always, but you don't need it, so keep that in mind. But one thing you might need to get this consistently down is a few slow talents. If you do have some NP to spare, Cyberpunk's slow talents are very powerful. But with the pairing of Sniper the Deadeye in this level and Sniper Cat Power Up, you might not need any slow talents at all. Now, Power Ups for the stage, you don't really need to bring Sniper Cat Power Up since we do have some heavy crowd control already. But in case you don't have Cyberpunk's slow talents or in case you want to be extra safe, Sniper Cat Power Up does help, definitely. But a thing you do want to bring, actually, is Rich Cat Power Up. While the level is very possible without Rich Cat Power Up, the thing here is, if you don't have a good base to build on while you're in the beginning few stages of this level, you're not gonna beat the level. And what I mean by that is, if you don't stack up your DPS enough, if you don't have enough cash to do so, once you hit the base, you're gonna be unprepared, you won't be able to kill the Scissoroos in time, unless your cats are heavily boosted or you're using the help of ubers. So Rich Cat completely eliminates that problem and lets you stack up in the beginning very greatly and build a good base for when you hit the base. Okay, finally, let's talk about the strategy here as we are doing right now. And if you couldn't tell already, we are stalling as much as possible because we want to get Sniper Cat or Sniper the Deadeye recharged as quickly as possible and maybe even recharged before you hit the base. And if you're able to do that, that is pretty much guaranteed to seal the deal and beat the level if you do play it properly, that is. And if you aren't able to do that, that is where Cyberpunk comes in. Cyberpunk will stall as much as possible even when Cappy is out to let your Sniper Cat recharge. And once you have two Sniper the Dead Eyes on the field, it is just a joke. So not only is stacking up your DPS very crucial in the beginning of the stage, stacking up your crowd control units is also very crucial as well because you want to get that head start. If you don't have that head start and take advantage of the base hit, you're gonna lose. I could only imagine how hell this stage would have been if it wasn't a base hit stage. 
being a base hit stage makes it very easy to counter. Now you don't want to over push in the beginning but if you do kill Scizoru and you push a little bit too early you just have to make sure you build up enough DPS so start spamming camera, start spamming pizza, start spamming seafarer and once you hit that base you're gonna have a nice stack ready to just wipe out the Scizoru's as quickly as possible and just fully focus on Cappy and crowd controlling Cappy. Now you must be wondering, Boogle, what if Cappy does a surge and hits my Sniper the Deadeye? Well, some of that might be RNG and sometimes you might get screwed over, so keep that in mind, but some of it is also reliant on timing. The big thing is as soon as you clear that Scizoru wave, you want to time in Macho Glass Cat and get those crowd controls immediately because it's only a matter of time that one Cyberpunk and one Sniper the Deadeye is able to completely crowd control Cappy until he starts pushing forward very hard. So Macho Glass Cat is the crux of the lineup. You send out Macho Glass Cat in time perfectly to crowd control Cappy to get him at a safe distance once again. That lets all of your other crowd control units just go to town. And as you can see, because we took our time in the beginning of the level to stack up Sniper the Deadeye and get it recharged quickly as possible, we do have two Sniper the Deadeyes on the field, and this is a pretty much a done deal. Now some very, very important things here. If you don't have enough DPS stacked up in the beginning, of course, you're not going to be able to clear the peons and what that means is first of all Kappa is going to push hard because Sniper the Deadeye won't be able to hit with so many peons in the way. Second of course he's going to move closer to those crowd control units and there's a high chance he might surge them and they die. That is why Rich Cat is so important to build that base of DPS in the beginning of the stage so you don't run into that problem. Otherwise you're perfectly fine because at this point even if Kappa does surge and just murder our DPS stack, we have the crowd control to just stall enough and build up another stack quickly again. Now another thing to keep in mind is once you start pushing into Kappa too much, you also want to make sure not to send out too many crowd control units because pushing into Kappa too much means it puts your crowd control units in danger of a surge attack and if you don't have them charged up in time, or ready, Kappa will push forward relentlessly and eventually just get to the base and you're done for. Unless you have him at low health, you're pretty much done for. So always make sure you do have a Cyberpunk ready just in case that happens. Make sure you do have Sniper the Deadeye ready just in case that happens. Do not send them out immediately if you have more than two on the field already. And also, don't forget to send out that crucial Macho Crystal. Don't forget to cycle. It is very important. And eventually, you're going to reach a point where it's just going to become way too easy and you're just going to keep bullying Kappa until he finally is dead. And bam, there you go. You completed flow like the stream pretty easily. Now let's hop into the second strategy, a pretty similar strategy, but let's hop into more suggestions as well and some more tips and stuff like that. So yeah. Now for my people who do not have Sniper the Deadeye, stress not because there is this wonderful unit by the name of Vendor Cat aka Tourist and Basically, it plays the same role, but a lot more risky. Now, since we don't have the ability to stack Sniper the Deadeye in the beginning, we're going to try to get Cyberpunk recharged as quick as possible this time. Now, once again, you want to absolutely make sure you do not over push. Otherwise, you won't be able to get your Cyberpunk at a decent recharge ready for when Kappa comes out. Now, the main difference here is, of course, with Sniper the Deadeye, we can crowd control at a safe distance. But this time with Vendor Cat, there's a lot more timing involved. And another thing that is very heavily involved is Peon Control. So you want to absolutely make sure you build up enough DPS in the beginning when you hit the base. Now this was a pretty bad run. As you can see, we killed the Scizoru way too early. We hit the base way too early. We didn't have a good enough stack ready and he started to push forward hard already. The crucial thing we did to flip this run around was of course get our Vendor Cat Cycles correctly and get those Macho Crystal Cat Cycles correctly. Now this is where bringing Sniper Cat power up is actually very crucial because those knockbacks are very helpful 
to get him at a safe distance to let Cyberpunk get those slows. Now that doesn't mean you just completely ignore Macho Crystal because you want to absolutely make sure you cycle that correctly every chance you get because that also lets Cyberpunk just slow Kappa down. Now once you handle the first Scissoru wave, that is your opportunity to, of course, to recycle. This is when you want to push as hard as possible, get Kappa back as far as possible before the next wave of Scissorus arrive. And if you just keep cycling that over and over again, you're gonna beat this level eventually. Now if you miss your tourist cycles, if you mess up your Macho Crystal cycles, that is a big problem because this time you don't have the backup of Sniper the Deadeye on the field. You're just gonna have to rely on Sniper Cat power up to knock back Kappa. And that isn't very reliable. That's just an extra bonus and extra security to have, but you do not want to rely on it. Now, another problem is if you don't kill the Scissorous quick enough, you're not gonna be able to tourist cycle in the first place because it's gonna be difficult, if not impossible, to get tourists crowd controls with Scissorous in the way. So some of that maybe is RNG reliant, maybe Kappa just keeps destroying your stack over and over again. That is just RNG, but one thing you want to make sure is absolutely try to save your Cyberpunk. Since this strategy is a little bit more RNG reliant, you want to make sure you have a backup plan always. Having two Cyberpunks on the field might be a good thing, but what if both of them die in one surge? Then you're completely screwed. So make sure you do have Cyberpunk ready just in case. And if you are in a position where all of your cycles are going perfectly and flawlessly, you're getting those Macho Crystal cycles on dot, you're getting those tourist cycles in every now and then to put Cappy or Kappa back at a safe distance, then sending a second Cyberpunk might be a good idea. But if you struggle with those cycles and getting them on time correctly, save your Cyberpunk absolutely. Now let's talk about some suggestions. I'm not going to go over the obvious, obvious suggestions like Dastly and Epic Fest exclusives and stuff like that. But Special Cat Talents, there is two Special Cats here that can pretty much power creep the stage if you do have the talents. Those two being of course Beefcake and of course Gato Amigo both have that Surge Evade or Surge Immune talent which is very overpowered for this stage. It does power creep this stage pretty hard. Only issue with that is when are you gonna ever boost or NP your special cats over something like Cyberpunk? So unless you have no other way and you're very desperate to beat this stage, I only recommend spending your NP and investing in special cats then. Otherwise, invest in your main units. Camera, Cyberpunk, Pizza, Seafarer, etc. Uber usage, stuff like Balrog is pretty powerful here. Bringing anti-alien nukers to just wipe out the Scissoru waves and just completely focus on Kappa, also very helpful. Some of the Lugas in the Luga family actually work pretty well here, surprisingly. Rusher Ubers, like of course Yuki, is also good here. But really, what you want to keep is the base strategy. Base strategy, build up a DPS stack in the beginning and get some nice crowd control units. If you have that, you can beat this level pretty easily. So yeah, that's going to do it. Invest into the correct units that you need to beat this stage. Don't waste investing on units that you might not use down the line. A very important thing to keep in mind always. Stuff like Cyberpunk Camera is going to be relevant all the time basically. So investing in those units is crucial. Unless you're desperate, like I said once again, you really want to beat the stage and you don't have any other way, then going for those special cat talents is an option. Not one I recommend, but it is an option. But yeah, that's it guys. Drop a like if this guide helped you out. Subscribe if you're new. Join the hashtag Google Gang. That is it for Kappa Guide, of course. Finally, it is here and finally it is over and revenge guides are gonna come eventually, so it's not like I'm not gonna ever do any of the revenge advents as well. I will attempt to cover everything I can. But yeah, it's been John Boogle and see ya.